Well, thank you for stopping back if you're continuing on this playlist or if you're just joining, thank you for, for clicking. Um, we're working on, this is part four of a playlist that I'm creating that's dedicated to this project. Um, it is a Zendela within a square and I have a border on mine and I plan to put the finished product into this frame. So that is what we are working on. Now, if you've missed any, um, go back on the playlist and you'll, you'll catch up. Um, part one, we worked on bales. Part two, we worked on a form of holly ball. Uh, part three is Huggins. And I'm doing two versions for those of you who just want to create a simple um, Zendella and practice these very easy tangles. Um, and then working on the version that will actually go into the frame as a finished piece. And we're just taking it section by section. So thank you for joining. And today again will be part four where I will be putting in um, a grid, a grid tangle, um, something very, very easy. And I'll be doing it on the Zendella as well. So that is what we're covering today. <laughs> and if you happen to notice, I, I'm not missing a finger. I just, I broke a nail. So it doesn't happen very often with the product I'm using. It's so wonderful. Yes, these are my real nails. I, everybody keeps asking. It's like, yes, these are my nails. And it's very rare, but when I break one, boy, do I break it. So just have to live with it. But I'm not missing any part of my finger. It's just broken nail. So let's get into part four and we'll go from there. Um, for those of you who are new to what we call grid, um, working on a grid pattern, I'm gonna first demonstrate it on a couple of, you know, these are just tiles that I traced out um, just to show you a little bit of the concept that this was Huggins we did in part three and we made it um, on this Zendella and we constructed it in a tangulation. It's called Crazy Huggins where we twisted and curved and all that. But I also have the demonstration of just how to do Huggins basically. Um, so today we're gonna just discuss a little bit more of how a grid uh, pattern works and then it'll be easier for you to fit it on your tile. So. A grid pattern is simply, let's just do um, our corner dots. Again, don't worry about the lines. I just want to make a, a little section perimeter, a string border to work within. Now a grid, a grid tangle is the concept of working on a grid. Now this is a very simple grid. Grids can be circular, they can be um, curved, they can be, you know, straight lines, whatever. It's just breaking this piece into even sections. Yours might be bigger, they might be smaller, it doesn't matter. But you are just making a uniform space. Let's see, about here. A uniform space to work in. So I'm just dividing this section up. Um, I have a little left over. Does not matter. So I've got my horizontal lines. Now I'm going to do my vertical lines. I want to have a, a square that I can keep track of. So I'll put my vertical lines in. They don't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be exactly. It's just a grid to work within. So now what I'm gonna do, these are reference marks. I'm going to use a tangle, basically, you know, it's print temps. So it's the spiral that just goes around. Um, you start and then you just make it 
keep turning and growing. And that is called print temps. And print temps can be used in so many ways. Okay, so I'm ready to work with my pen. Okay, because this is bigger, I'm going to be working with my 0.05. Um, it's it's a micron pen. Don't don't worry about about the color. It is it's it's a 0.05. I just don't have one right available. Okay, let's start with our print temps. Let's just start in the middle and work around like so. Very simple. Go to your next square, start in the middle, work around. Not exact, doesn't matter. Start in the middle, take off and follow that line around the border. Again, start in the middle, follow around. And I'm not trying to make them match or, or anything. It's just a, it just gives me a reference point working within these square spaces. So very easy. Okay, so we have our, our squares and we filled them with our simple print temps and you can always make them bigger or smaller as you go. I'm gonna add an element of just rounding the, just the corners of this square. Just going and just deepening that effect of a rounded corner on each of these squares. And I can draw up the line if I want. It doesn't matter because the next one is going to kind of fill it up anyways. But see how I'm just rounding around my print temp? So now when you complete your pattern, your pencil marks are disappearing and you have a little bit of a balanced it's not exact if you wanted to get exact you could get a ruler and measure these out but that's not the point of Zentango. Zentango isn't meant to be um, precise and exact it's meant to be meditative and and fun and just something you can just play with um, when you're out. You don't have to specifically measure these out. So I'm doing this big so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna just keep rounding these corners of each square. And you'll see a pattern that's somewhat uniform beginning to appear. Doing this quickly. So you can take your time doing this and, and you know, make it more uniform if you want. Um, I'm gonna make this circle just a little bit bigger to fill in that section. Just kind of round these and continue on and fill your grid.
Okay. This is a very sloppy, just quick demonstration. The reason grids are wonderful is there are so many pieces. We call them fragments. Um, in this case, my fragment is fragment is the print hem. But this can get much more complex with different fragments. So when you fill them in, you're repeating the same pattern, but the lines disappear. And that's how you get really cool patterns that are somewhat uniform, but unique. So I wanted to demonstrate how that pencil line disappears just with an easy um, tangle that we put in between. But fragments can be so much fun. There's so many things you can do with them. Um, I'll do another video on that. But for today, we're just gonna stay with print temps because I am filling them in right here and I will be more careful and <laughs> more precise. But this is the idea of what we're working on. Now on my grid pattern that I will be using, I'm gonna put a bit of a curved grid that I can work within. So let me just show you just kind of in a big form what I plan on doing. Um, this section is going to be, oh, like mine is something like this. Okay, so what I want to do is pick a side to start at, and I'm going to make it even, you know, whatever I decide, however I decide to divvy this up, I just want to make it uniform or even. So I'm going to go across. I'm not really worried about the shape. I just want to get some uniformity in my squares. So a bit of a curve and this one would go to the end. And this is about the same width. So that's fine. Now your curve can go either this way or this way. I'm choosing to go this way. So that is my curved grid pencil string that now I'm going to go in and use my, I'm using a very large um, pen on this. I'm going to go much smaller when I work on my piece. Um, I didn't recognize the color. Okay and put my print temps in and then fill the corners deep in the dark, puddle the corners and just leaving a bit of a white area in between. Okay, so same principle just in a curved format. Okay, let's proceed with our, either if you're working on the Zendella or if you're working on the, um, the paper, whatever your paper choice is in a tile format. And let's fill in that grid in this section. So now I'm gonna be more precise. Um, take it slow. I want to, we'll start on the tile first. Now mine is really, I'm working small. So I'm gonna be using my 0.01 pen, um, much easier to work with and control. And I want my curve, I want my grid to, I worked really small on this one. You can work big, you can work small. I'm gonna keep it a little tighter because this is very tiny and I won't have many if I make it very large. I'm gonna start, there's a little section on mine over here. So I'm gonna just kind of follow that line and begin a curved string that I can follow. Now this one would be, my section is under the ribbon. So I wanna keep it even and I'm gonna put a little line right here 
because if that were to curve, it would fall under my ribbon. All right, this one is a little hard to work on because it is so small. So I hope yours is a little easier to follow. Okay, I have my horizontal lines. It actually looks like just one ribbon, but I'm working in a grid format. I'm gonna turn and make my um, vertical, horizontal, whatever you would consider them to be from your perspective. And start going this way. And again, this one is falling under the ribbon. So I'm gonna curve it right here. And about the space between these two, again, it would fall under this ribbon. So I'm ignoring the bottom part. And down here now would be about right here and right here. So this one, yeah, it's about, it's about right. Just eye it up and about the same distance, whatever distance you're working in. There's just so little on my side of my ribbon. That's just how it worked out and that's fine because the idea is to squeeze your tangles within this section. So that is my grid and how it turned out on this tile. So let's go ahead and fill these in now with our print temps that I demonstrated in this one, but we'll be more precise. Okay, so I'm working with my point 01. Remember to keep turning your tile and you'll get that variation naturally. Don't pay attention to anything else. Just work on your section, however the ribbon may fall over your piece. No piece, no two pieces are ever gonna be the same. I'm gonna start in a full one, a full square somewhat. There's a little corner tucked under here, but I'm gonna make my print temp right here. And they're relatively small. Okay, now I could go ahead and make all my print temps and come back and fill in the corners. But for this one, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm working within just this square. I'm not looking at anything else, just the square on my grid. And I'm rounding those corners. So it's thicker at the corners. Again, not looking at anything outside the square that I'm working on. This one is gonna be tucked under the ribbon a little, so I'm not gonna really fill it in because my print temp will disappear. So judge whatever you have you're working with and just decide that way. So see, now I've got my print temp in the middle and don't worry with shading, we can darken up these lines and they'll show up more and um, be more defined once we do the shading. So now continue on and with each square, kind of look at what area, look at what area you have to work with and fill in your next print temp. If you bump into the line, just either stop, pick up, and continue around, and stop it wherever you want. It does not have to be uniform. Fill in the corners, darken the corners, and just the line in between. This one is going to be a thick corner.
And again, if you keep turning, that keeps you focused on this one square. And I wanted to cross and meet the other one. I'll put my line in here. So now you see a pattern. Your pencil lines are disappearing and you see a pattern appearing. So this one, I'm gonna just outline the area I'm working in, which is another way to keep your eye on what's going on. And don't worry if you make, you know, if there's a little run over, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Okay, another little print temp. And then the corners. And see how relaxing that's the whole key is just the relaxing benefit of you really don't have to think about where your next line's going to go you're repeating a pattern within a square and working within that grid makes it very easy all right now this one we are coming to where we don't have a full square to work with. So I'll take that into account. I'll start in the middle. I'll stop at my border, pick up and go around again and just try to fit it in as best I can. And this is working very small. So My corners are very tiny. Okay, now I'm not gonna worry about this line right now or filling in anything over here. I will decide I could color this in black if I didn't want to fill in a, a print temp here. Um, it just depends what you're working with. You know, my print temp would be so small that I'm just gonna fill these in black. That's, that's fine. It's just going to make them stand out more at the border. So whatever you decide to do is fine. I'm gonna skip these because they're so tiny. So just proceed to fill in your section like so. And I'll speed this up because I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Okay, I decided to just go black because I was getting so tiny here that it just, for me, I just, I didn't want to fill them in. If you have more room on this side on your ribbon, keep going. If you don't have room for a full one, just put in a partial one. It's just that little detail. And I still have a corner of the section on this side. So I'm gonna put one here. I'm going to try to squeeze just a tiny one in here, round the corners. And there we go. We've got our print temps going around here. Now, when I go back, I think I can fit just a part of one right here, very small, round those corners. And this one, it's just <laughs> a little tiny print temp. 
which is fine. When we shade it, it'll just give it a little dimension. So I see a little bit of a corner here. I went around. Okay, so I've got this side of my ribbon filled up. So go ahead and however big your other side of your section is on the other side of the ribbon, go ahead and fill in your print temps. And then we will do, um, if for those of you who are working on the Zendella, we'll work on the Zendella. But I just wanna complete this one. So I'm gonna fill in this other section and then I'm gonna shade it. And that'll be the tile portion for our Zendella on this one. This one I'm working much smaller than the actual Zendella. Okay, now I have a little tiny corner here that is just, it's too small that I'm not gonna worry about. I'm gonna round my border of my Zendella and I could fill it in in a hole or leave a little bit of a white space as if there's a print temp on the end here, which I think I'll do for now. I might change my mind when I get to the, the um, other details that I'm going to do. But for now, I'm just going to leave a little bit of white space. Okay, so we have our basic grid and our little print temps inside. So let's move on to shading and making these pop out a little bit more. The print temps can be so fun because you can use them in so many ways. I use a form of them in my paintings. Um, this isn't a grid pattern, but I just, you know, use it as some detail work. And that's basically print temp. Although at the time I did this painting, I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I just, you know, was constructing the pattern um, naturally. So it's just the idea of actually making Zentango precisely calls this a print temp. And that's just what we're doing. So let's, let's go into shading. Okay, since I'm working on the, with the Zentango um, mini graphite pencil, these work really well with the wooden sharpeners. This is just a wood cutter by K-U-M, um, I'm not sure how they pronounce that, but um, that works really well with these mini graphites and you can find them on Zentangle.com. They do not, this, this sharpener does not work well with um, regular graphite pencils. I, I use my metal sharpener for my colored pencils um, or my graphite work. So depending on what you're doing, um, this sharpener is better for um, colored pencils and regular pencils. But for the mini graphite from 
that you can buy through Zentango. Um, the wood sharpener is really wonderful. Okay. A little side point there. Okay, now shading these, you could shade it any number of ways. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit on various various sides. I don't want to lose my white, but just give it enough dimension to lift it a bit. And remember, you're going to blend this out with your tortillon or blending stick, um, like so. So leave, leave enough that you can blend that graphite out slightly without losing your white completely. And remember, you can always pick it up with an eraser if you want more contrast and lighten it up a bit, but nothing really precise. I'm just adding a bit of dimension and making that more gradual from black to white. popping it off the page that you're working on. Okay, now that I've got my graphite laid ever so slightly in there, I'm gonna come back with my tortillon. If you have different sizes, because I'm working so small, it would be nice to have my smaller one, but it's not handy. I must have been working with blue on this one. Um, but it's not going to matter for this piece. And blend these out. And I can go back and weight the lines, darken them up. If you feel like you're losing them, you bring them back at the end with that polishing work of weighting the lines, varying the weight of each line, making it thicker or thinner. But just blend it out a little and see where you're at. So now that you've got your first layer of shading in, just take a step back and look at it and see if there's anything you may have missed. But from there, we can start to refine it and make it a little bit sharper. So again, because I'm working so small, I'm going to use my 0 0.01 and weight some of these lines so that they show up. Now this will not go over graphite very well. Um, so I'm just doing the ones that are in the white to darken them up just a bit. Okay, so that slightly, you know, brings them up a little bit more. And I chose print temps because it's one of the first tangles also we learn, uh, bales, print temps, um, holiba. So I chose that for the grid pattern, just to get the concept of grid patterns, you know, what we do and how we fill them. There's much more complex design work that you can do once you get the idea of how to work in a grid. Okay, so that's the section on my tile and I'm gonna let that dry and we'll do a bigger one on the Zendella and maybe you're already working bigger, but this one will show up a little bit better.
All right, let's start with our grid. And if you notice, if you're following along with this playlist, we're building up our library inside of our minds or reference of different tangles as we go. So each of these tangles, there's so many variations that you can add. Um, it's just, you're learning, you're learning as we go to increase your tangle vocabulary. I'm gonna to choose to start this way. And I'm gonna make these a little, a little bigger. And I'm gonna keep my curved grid effect following the circular string that we made. Now again, don't worry if you know I've lost my curve a little here. I can I can correct that. This is just for reference. So I want to turn my Zendella tile, whatever you're working on, and I'm going to choose to make mine follow this this curve. So however big you want that square to be. Just follow it around. I'm not paying attention to my ribbon line. I'm acting as if that's not there. I'm just trying to keep these even somewhat. And keep turning to make it easier to work with as you go. I'm working a little blind because I'm trying to see I'm trying to get a, the best shot for the camera. So it's a little hard for me to see, whereas normally I wouldn't be so concerned and I could get these more precise, but that's, that's a base to work with. All right, so we can move on and we start filling our sections with the print temps. Thank you. 
then when I come to one where I see I could fit maybe a thinner line to add more contrast, I just go back to my smaller pen and just squeeze a line in there, make a better fit. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to stop there because if you notice, I left my edges. Um, these I probably could get away with using the 0.05, but I'm going to switch out to my smaller 0.02 or 0.01 to get the finer details. Now don't worry if this looks messy or not quite, you know, perfect. It's, it's just the concept of rounding those corners and filling it in and leaving some white space and don't worry too much. The effect will be there when you're done. Also, if you're working, I'm going to put the 0.05 in here, or the 0.02, um, use the pen to fill and finish that. If you are working on um, Zentango paper, you will notice the difference of how your pen lays on the paper, how smoothly, and it just, it it's absorbs the ink so much better than even, you know, a watercolor paper or a smooth paper. Zentango really worked hard at making a perfect paper to work with the archival inks. So it's just really a beautiful effect. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my 0.02 and fill in, if I see little lines that I could add more around my print temps, I will, but it'll just give me a little more control filling in these smaller areas. Okay, that's good enough for me. I'm going to darken our ribbon line here. Okay, and don't worry too much. We're going to fill that ribbon with a another tango. Um, so don't worry too much about this part. Um, next we're going to move on to shading and we'll see what we have.
Okay, so now I am ready to come in with my tortillon and blend this out. Okay, now that you've got it blended, if you've lost any of your white, you can come back with your eraser, your kneaded eraser, and just pick up. I usually, almost always, <laughs> use my Tombow um, eraser, but I went to the beach, so it is still in my bag from tangling. So I'm just going to pick up as best I can a little bit of the white if I lost it. I just don't find the kneaded eraser works as well and precise as my Tombow. So if that's enough to bring it back. And again, as you go back and then you can see you have little um, spaces of black, you can either blend that some more or go in with your pen and just touch up any little areas that you see. Remember, any section, you can go back and add more detail. Like I'm looking at this now and it's like, there's more I would like to do to shade it and contrast it. But right now I'm just staying focused on one section at a time, just the base. That's the beauty of Zentangle too, is you just keep going, adding more detail, as much or as little as you want to do. When you're in that quiet, focused state, you'll find your work much more precise. And relaxing as I've mentioned time and again, <laughs> when I'm talking and tangling, it is not as precise as when I'm in the zone and just tangling. And you can darken any lines or anything that you see or waiting, we call that waiting the lines. If you go back and you darken something, just give it a little bit more depth. Just part of the line even. Just builds a little bit more contrast. And I'm able to do a little more of that because this one is bigger print temps than what I did on the larger tile that I was demonstrating on. It's a larger tile, but it's a smaller Zendella because of the size I chose, the seven by seven. And I'm just doing the, the tips, that little dot in the middle, just darkening it up. Each little thing you do makes your piece more interesting and unique. Okay, so we've weighted our lines, we've blended out with the tortillon, and now 
I have a little bit, this is just an extra step that I didn't do on this version because I don't have as much black to work with. But I thought this one could use, if you wanted, this one could use a little more interest to me. So I'm gonna come in with my Jelly Roll 08 and I'm gonna just make some little print temps on the top that layer over this piece. So if you wanna stop here, that's fine. This is just an added step. So let your ink dry because that was heavier ink and then come in with your jelly roll. Okay, this is a, just an added effect. I'm gonna come in now that my ink is dry with my jelly roll, I've got the 08. And I'm just gonna put, lightly touch some white print temps in between these. And if you're working on the tile and you have more room, you can certainly do that on that one. Um, and they're not really full. I'm just, you know, whatever looks good. They can go behind the others, on top of the others, whatever you choose. It doesn't take much pressure. The jelly roll just will smoothly glide on especially the Zentangle papers. And if your jelly roll starts to, I keep turning mine, rotating it, but if it starts to um, not run smoothly for you, just take a piece of paper um, and bring it back, rub out the, the tip and it'll start flowing for you again. That's only if it clogs a little. Remember not to shake them. Just run them over a piece of paper and you'll be good to go. And always close them tight so they don't dry out and store them horizontally for a longer life of your pen. Some are going over, some are going under. It doesn't matter. Okay, so just that simple thing adds a bit more detail that when you stand back and look at it, it's more interesting and very easy to do. Okay, so when we're done, we will shade and lift this ribbon up off even more, but I wanna get the ribbon done first before I do the extra shading on the borders to make it pop up. So that'll be after we're done with the ribbon part. And that will be section five or part five um, coming up in the next video if the whole playlist is if you're watching this in the future, the whole playlist will be up there. And if you're watching it as I'm releasing it, I am putting up um, one video every other day. So um, be sure to tune in and um, catch the next tangle that we do. But for today, that would be our Zendella portion of our, whichever piece you're, you're constructing. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed part four and the different style of print temp on a grid that we created. And in the meantime, take care, um, keep tangling. And if you're watching this all together when the playlist is up, I will just say I'll see you in the next one. So much love. This is Lori. Take care. Thank you.